I'm Alan Weiss, and this is The Writing on the Wall. Most of you know Bentley here. Welcome to Writing on the Wall. I expect Bentley, you know, to return the Frisbee when I throw it. And I don't expect that he'll allow me to use him as a footrest. He expects me to feed him twice a day, but not as much as he can possibly eat. We have this understanding, right? And he doesn't expect to have to stay in a shot. So we have certain expectations of each other, and they're met, and we have a good time together. He's a dog. Fair treatment is the title of this episode. Why don't we demand and extend proper treatment, the way Bentley and I have this understanding. I go into restaurants, where I, I am every night of the week, and I see women dressed to the gills, dressed beautifully, dressed well, by and large. And I see a lot of men with them with t-shirts on and torn jeans, and I don't mean stylish. Why is that? I find dismissive doctors, not any doctor I'll stay with, but a lot of you deal with dismissive doctors. They think your questions are silly, or they won't answer them, or they won't spend more time with you. It's not about the insurance company's regulations. It's about the doctor. We've met phone reps where we have a complaint, a legitimate complaint, and the phone rep says, I know how you feel. No, you don't. That's client service 101. They're taught in some classroom from some training company making $500 a head to do this kind of crap, and it means nothing. Why don't we demand better treatment than that? There are contractors that don't show up. I mean, I live on an estate, and there are people who come here and don't come back, or they're late showing up, or they don't do the right thing. I get somebody else. What are they thinking? And then they wonder when times are tough why they don't have business. We have taxi drivers who are uninformed, who are rude, who smell. We should expect better treatment than that. What do the taxi drivers expect when something like Uber or Lyft competes with them? Of course they're going to be in third or fourth or 20th place. When a taxi driver says, well, I don't know where St. Patrick's Cathedral is in New York, that's because you're ignorant. And what about cloying waiters? What about these servers who come over and introduce themselves and tell you what their favorites are? I don't care what your favorites are. Why would I care? They use stupid phrases like, are you still enjoying this? No, I'm eating it. I'll tell you when I'm done. It will be grilled to your liking. Really? As opposed to grilled to somebody else's liking? What the hell does that mean? We should demand better treatment. We should extend better treatment. I'm polite to every server. I'm polite to the bussers. I'm polite to everyone. I say thank you when water's poured because I think that's the right thing to do. I tip valets well. But we should expect that kind of treatment in return. You know, a slovenly guy insults both the partner he's with and the place he's in and the other people in that place. I used to go to Gary Danko in San Francisco. It's one of the top restaurants in the country at the time. And then they relaxed the rules. You don't need a jacket to get in. Well, okay, California. But then I saw a guy in a, at the bar in a t-shirt, and I failed to go back. I would not go back. There are too many excellent restaurants that I can go to. I don't need to go to a place when a guy's disrespecting the place and therefore me. You can make people change. Uh, I'll be at the Palace in New York again not too long, and the Palace is one of my hangouts in New York. And I've been there consistently for 10 years. I'm a good customer. Well, one day I walk in, and there's a new desk clerk in the towers. And she starts giving me a hard time about something. And I said, look, I'm not here to be given a hard time. And with that, the concierge from the towers comes running over and says, Dr. Weiss, it's so nice to have you back. What can we do for you? Yada, yada. And ever since that day two years ago, this desk clerk has been so nice to me, it's astounding. Dr. Weiss, nice to have you back. Can I get you something? Everything I need is proactively arranged for. She never ceases to be courteous. You can change these things by demanding the kind of treatment that you deserve. I was speaking at the National Speakers Association once at one of their conventions, and I was doing them. I, when I speak at these conventions pro bono, it's a favor. And I had a main stage speech, what's called a keynote speech, really a, 
a, a main stage speech, uh, a plenary speech. And then uh, I was doing some kind of panel, and then I was doing a concurrent session. So I was doing all of this for them over three days. And the concurrent session had about 400 people, you know, I'm a popular guy. And <laughs> I walk into the room, and it's not set up right. And I can't, there's nobody from NSA there to help with it. So I got some hotel people who were nice enough to help, and I went to see the NSA staff on site. And she said, oh, we're over stretched. We don't have people. I said, I have a 400-seat room. She said, you don't get special treatment. I said, I don't want special treatment. I want professional treatment. You have to fight back. You can't take crap if you want fair treatment. We allow it. We allow it in our choices. We allow it in who we choose as vendors. We allow it in our clients. We allow it in our relationships. We even allow it in our partners. We should extend fair treatment and receive fair treatment. It's as simple as that. My feeling is show some respect or get out. Bentley's a wonderful dog. He's a great dog. Just don't disrespect him. <laughs>